Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. And big thanks to my moderator, Peter, for sending me this short video from Dr. Barry. It really is short, it's like 15 or 20 seconds. And thank heavens it's short, because in the past when I've responded to Dr. Barry, they've been much longer videos of his, and he just throws so much misinformation out there. It really, there's just no way to, to respond to any one of those points in any meaningful way. So fortunately, we're gonna focus on two things he said in this video which are demonstrably false, just complete pseudoscience misinformation, and expose Dr. Barry once and for all for what he is, and we'll say what he is later on. Plants are trying to discourage you from eating them. They can't run away or, or kick you, so they basically poison their own flesh. In the botany literature, it's known. They're called secondary chemicals in the plants. The reason they put these secondary chemicals in their flesh is to discourage mammals and insects from eating them. That's the only reason those phytochemicals are there. So Dr. Barry's claims there about this one and only single function of phytochemicals or secondary metabolites, it's a mix of partial truths, oversimplification, and some statements that are not supported at all by the scientific evidence. This is completely misleading statements. And to make sure we're all on the same page here, let's listen in his own words one more time what he said about this one role for phytochemicals. The reason they put these secondary chemicals in their flesh is to discourage mammals and insects from eating them. That's the only reason those phytochemicals are there. So he's saying there's one and only one reason why phytochemicals are in plants is that they evolve these phytochemicals solely as a defense mechanism to defend against people and animals from eating them. And as we'll see, he's, yeah, he's partially right there. I mean, that is one function, but it's not the only function. As we'll see, there's many other functions and roles for these phytochemicals that go way beyond just defense. I mean, all it takes is to review some botany. Here's an intro to botany review plant secondary metabolites. And yes, one of the stated functions that phytochemicals provide for plants, according to this review of botany, yeah, Dr. Barry is right, defense against herbivores. But notice how there's more words after that. And pathogens? I thought he said there's nothing else. It's just defense against herbivores. So we already see he's wrong. And just for our information sake, just look down below. You'll see that certain phytochemicals protect plants from certain kinds of fungi and bacteria. But protection against pathogens is just the start. There's also protection against abiotic stresses. Secondary metabolites can help plants cope with abiotic stresses, such as UV radiation, drought, salinity, and extreme temperatures. And there's attraction of pollinators and seed dispersers functions as well. Many plants rely on animals for pollination and seed dispersal. And these secondary metabolites play a key role in attracting these mutualistic partners. Further, these secondary metabolites have medical importance. Plant secondary metabolites have been used by humans for centuries as medicines, pesticides, flavorings, and dyes. So some of you might be saying, yeah, this is a really dumb and boring point that you're going off on, Ryan. And I agree completely. I don't think it's all that interesting at all, unless you have a, an interest in like brushing up on like high school botany, which I don't think Dr. Barry ever took, or maybe it was just a long time ago. No, he's a medical doctor. You don't need to learn about plants, but he's acting like an authority, speaking like he knows all about plant metabolism. And again, why am I even talking about this stuff for? Let's listen to his claim one more time and let's see if it holds up now that we know all about this stuff now. The reason they put these secondary chemicals in their flesh is to discourage mammals and insects from eating them. That's the only reason those phytochemicals are there. Nope, just flat out wrong, Dr. Barry. I mean, this is extremely embarrassing. You've been saying stuff like this for years, and I might be the first person to actually look into this matter. And as I showed from just looking at a, like a high school review of botany, it just shows that your claims are just absurdly patently false. So, so anyway, let's play back another clip from a short video here and see another statement he made with such certainty and authority that just not supported by the evidence. So they basically poison their own flesh. In the botany literature, it's known. All right, so the plants poison their own flesh with these phytochemicals, as you said, to provide some kind of defense for itself so that 
animals and humans don't eat on them. So let's see if this is true that plants in general are are toxic. They're poison. Plants poison their own flesh and this is known in the scientific botany literature. All right, so here's an article from this year, Food and Science Nutrition, and it starts off right on the abstract that present in fruits, vegetables and grains and seed oils, these compounds are considered safe for consumption due to the coevolution and adaptation between mammals and plants. And further down in the abstract, it says this comprehensive review explores the mechanisms of action, health, benefits, and applications of dietary phytochemicals with a particular focus on key groups such as polyphenols, flavonoids, and carotenoids. So there's nothing in the abstract or anywhere in the article about how these phytochemicals are poison and the authors make no claim. Yeah, yeah, people, don't eat them. Just go carnivore. But, you know, someone could say, well, I just won an article. That doesn't, you know, like, make the scientific consensus. And I totally agree. So let's look at another study about phytochemicals and see if they say anything about, you know, poison in the flesh here. Nope, once again, just more good stuff. Health benefits of polyphenols include action against free radicals, protective effects against cardiovascular diseases, cancers, and other age-related diseases, and prevention of inflammation and allergies. So yes, yeah, a second study, and I realize that too does not make a scientific consensus. I could be cherry picking the only two studies in the world that say that these compounds are good for you, but no, it's not what the case is at all. Let's actually now step up to see if there's any health organizations. Like, you know, there could be weird outlier studies that say anything, but let's see if there's any health organizations that give their support or their warnings about humans consuming these phytochemicals. So the very first health organization I pulled up here was UCLA Health. What are phytochemicals and why you should eat more of them? Well, it sounds like they're not giving warnings about poison in the flesh here. They give a nice definition of what phytochemicals are. All plants, including fruit, vegetables, beans, and grains, produce phytochemicals. They are part of the plant's immune system and help protect the plant from viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites. I guess they could have added against you know, creatures that want to munch on them too. And they list a whole bunch of health benefits from consuming phytochemicals, such as improved immune function, they help prevent cancer, they protect your brain, and they support heart health, amongst other things. And finding support from health organizations is exactly what we would expect if it were not dangerous to consume plants and their phytochemicals. In fact, I've shown this image here hundreds of times on our YouTube channel here. The many health organizations from around the world who have reviewed the scientific literature and make statements on the healthfulness of eating plants. And if Dr. Barry were right about how plants and their phytochemicals are dangerous and don't eat them, issuing some kind of warning for all who will listen, we would expect there to be at least one, if not many, health organizations echoing what he's saying. I couldn't find any from a traditional Google search, so I asked Perplexity AI, are there any health organizations from anywhere in the world that warn people not to consume plants because the phytonutrient chemicals are in some way bad, even poisonous, as Dr. Barry says? And after waiting a long time to get back from it searching, I found, yes, there are no major health organizations anywhere in the world that warn people not to consume plant foods because their phytochemicals are bad or poisonous in the way Dr. Barry claims. So once again, this is not looking good for Dr. Barry and his claims that he's been making about how plants are trying to kill you for all these years. No health organizations are saying what he's saying, which emphasizes the point I've been saying for all these years. Don't listen to lone people on social media. Listen to, even if they have a doctor in front of their name like he does, because doctors can be wrong. They can make up anything they want, but health organizations have a lot more writing on the line as far as their reputation and trustworthiness go. So. Once again, if Dr. Barry were right, we would expect there to be at least one health organization in the world repeating what he's saying, and there's not even a single one. So at this point, I'm wondering, does Dr. Bear have any evidence for his claims that plants are trying to discourage us from eating them by producing these phytochemicals that are poison? So since I had perplexity open, I asked it that very question. And it gave a really long, detailed response here. So for those of us that are more TLDR, let's skip down to the conclusion. It admits that Barry has some basis in evolutionary plant biology for his defense theory. You know, plants are trying to defend themselves against being eaten. But there is no strong evidence that phytochemicals in normal edible plant foods present a widespread health hazard to humans. His position ignores 
overwhelming research and health consensus about the benefits of phytochemical rich plant diets. Only rare individuals with unique sensitivities, allergies, or extremely abnormal diets face real risk. For the vast majority, plant phytochemicals are safe and beneficial. All right, so he's totally ignoring the scientific consensus for which there is overwhelming evidence about the healthful benefits of eating phytochemical rich plant diets. So I'm wondering at this point, is it even ethical for a medical doctor to spread such misinformation on his social media? And of course not. Perplexity said, it is unethical for a medical doctor to present information that is misleading, alarmist, or contrary to the established scientific evidence, especially when such claims may influence public behavior and health. And in the conclusion, it says, it is not ethical for doctors to tell people without evidence that common plant foods are dangerous to their health or should be avoided due to their phytochemicals. So this supports what I've long thought for years, that it's unethical for Dr. Barry to be spouting non-evidence-based information about how plants are dangerous and trying to kill you, knowing that he has zero health organizations supporting what he's saying. So I already know how he's going to respond. He's going to say, well, I have evidence about this. I've been trying this diet on myself. I've seen it work on other people I know. This is called anecdotal evidence. So I asked perplexity. So I reminded perplexity that he said, it is not ethical for doctors to tell people without evidence that common plant foods are dangerous for their health. So what if Dr. Barry says his evidence is based on anecdotal claims of his own as well as those of other people he knows or treats as patients? And it said, no surprise, anecdotal claims, even from a doctor's personal experiences or those of their patients, do not meet the standard of scientific or medical evidence required for responsible and ethical health advice, especially when the advice contradicts the established consensus of medical science and public health authorities. So in conclusion, citing anecdotal claims does not justify making broad, unqualified claims about the dangers of eating plant foods. So no matter how you look at it, Dr. Barry is just completely wrong in everything he said in his video. The science is all wrong. The science shows that phytochemicals are in plants for more than just defense. There's many other benefits to plants and humans from phytochemicals. And secondly, there's no scientific evidence that suggests that humans should just abandon eating plants and their phytochemicals because they're poison. In fact, the science and the health recommendations from health organizations say the complete opposite. Thirdly, he's on some very dubious ethical grounds promoting a diet that says don't eat any plants for such bogus reasons. So I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments. What do you think about Dr. Barry just asserting things with such confidence and authority? Like, listen to me, I'm a doctor. Yet he shows that he doesn't even understand what people in like 12th grade know about basic botany. So when you comment down below, let me know what your thoughts are. Hit like if you enjoyed this video. Do all that good stuff. Help us out. And if you thought I was totally wrong, somehow... The scientific consensus is completely wrong and this one nice avuncular doctor in rural Tennessee has it all figured out and the science world is totally uh, crap and he knows better. I'd love to hear from you. Please don't comment down below. Better yet, come to my live stream Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time and be civil and we can probably have a discussion about it. So until then guys, remember I'll see you Friday and it doesn't suck being vegan.